as we walk through this crazy life. God works through His Word, by His Spirit, in His people to transform us into the likeness of Christ. Therefore, Daily Intent is a streaming devotion of First Baptist Church of Sweden with the purpose of helping you walk intentionally with Christ day by day. As we prepare to go live, we ask that you would use the remaining time to pray that God would guide our words and open your hearts to obey Him today. If we can help you in your walk, or if you have any questions, please send us a message and we will get back with you as soon as possible. We pray that this is a blessing for you today. Good morning and welcome to First Baptist Church of Kabul. I'm Pastor Benjamin and this is another episode of Daily Intent. And for you dailies out there, we appreciate you tuning in each and every day and hope that this continues to be a blessing to you. I would ask that if you are uh, benefiting from this or you would like to benefit from this maybe in a different way, if there's a, a time that you think is best for this, please uh, put that in the comments or send a message to us as we want to uh, continue to evaluate and figure out how we're, sit, how we're using this. Because honestly, this is for you all. We, we do this as a, as a tool, a ministry resource for you all to walk daily with Christ. And we want to do it in such a way that it is helpful for you. And so uh, please put that in the, the comments below if, uh, if there's a way that we can serve you better in that. Uh, I hope everyone enjoyed last week as we took a walk through Holy Week with Christ, and we looked at uh, what was happening during that week leading up to Christ. We did that because there is so much information in the Gospels and in the Epistles regarding how important that time in Christ's life is for us as individuals. And so I do hope that that was a blessing to you. Uh, today, I want to pick another topic, but something maybe a little bit different than we've done so far. It's something that I don't think we're talking about enough in light of today's circumstances. You see, we find ourselves in an unprecedented time of social isolation. Um, and this social isolation is being carried out differently in different places, uh, at, in different ways. And so uh, we don't really think about its effect on us and uh, what exactly, how exactly we should interact with that in light of what the Bible says. So today we're going to begin a new series about uh, what the Bible says about social distancing. And so that's kind of what we're going to look about. And I just want to begin by saying it feels wrong. This social distancing feels wrong. It, it feels like we are less than human. Now, hear me out. Um, I am not saying that we should ignore the, the instructions of the authorities over us. What I am saying is this is not the way God designed it. It is inhumane in the truest sense of the word. We were not designed as human beings to be distanced socially. Social isolation makes us feel less than human. We were created to relate to one another. And that's kind of what I want to talk about because I think there are many pitfalls in the Christian life for a lot of us, especially during this time uh, of COVID-19. And this is one of those pitfalls that I think we're not talking about enough and all of the ways it can affect us. But not only that, I think it can help us even as we move out of this time of social isolation and we begin to reacclimate to life together again, if we begin wrestling with them now. In order for us to understand why this feels so wrong, we need a theology of relationships. Now, hold on. Don't turn me off. I know I said the T word and it makes a lot of people nervous. Theology is not a bad word, okay? Uh, so just give me 30 seconds to explain why this is important. You already have a theology. Everyone does. 
Theology is an understanding of how God relates to everything and how we are to relate to God. And and so in order for us to understand this, we have to begin by understanding that theology is not merely an intellectual practice for the elite spiritual Christians, but it is something that each of us practices day by day. And when we don't acknowledge that and we don't wrestle with that, then we find ourselves being pulled into false theology and false doctrines, and we find ourselves giving ourselves to ideas that the Bible doesn't teach at all and actually are contrary to what God has said about himself and about us. And so if we are to understand our world rightly, even in 2020, if we are to understand that rightly, we have to understand that through the biblical lens of Scripture And in Scripture, it reveals for us an understanding of who God is, how He operates, who we are, how we operate, and what God is doing through all of this mess. And so we need to have a theology of relationships. And so that's what we're going to be kind of looking at underneath this umbrella of what does the Bible say about social distancing. So uh, whether we confess it or not, this is something we need. And a proper understanding of this is not only helpful, but it is hope giving to us in these moments. And so that is what I want. I want you to have hope in God's word that transforms the way you live as you think about God, as you think about yourself, and as you think about others. So let's dive in by going back to the basics, okay? We're going to go back to the very beginning in Genesis. In the book of Genesis, chapters 1 and 2, we have the the basics of understanding why social distancing feels inhumane, okay? And so that's what I want us to look at today. We, I want to go back to Genesis chapter 1 and 2. And, and we have, in Genesis chapter 1, we have creation as kind of the, the backdrop behind what we're going to look at today. God has been creating a world, um, and in this world, he is creating it for his glory. And at the end of each and every day, he acknowledges that it is good. It is pleasing to God. It is without sin or fault or blemish. Each aspect of the world God created is perfect, and he culminates this creation with the creation of Adam and Eve. And and it's interesting when we see God creating Adam and Eve in the Genesis chapter 1. In Genesis chapter 1, each and every day we see him saying, and God said, let there be. Right, And so you have this pattern, and then when you get to Genesis chapter 1, verses 26, suddenly the pattern changes slightly. And, and this pattern that we see now looks a little bit different. And so now God is not saying, let there be, but he says, let us make. And so there's, there's something here. God is designing something special here in Genesis chapter 1, and that something special is you and I. It is humankind. And we see in this, he says, God says, let us, uh, sorry, verse 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And we see this this picture here of what God did on the sixth day. And when God gets done, he says, and it is very good, and he rests. And so God designed something beautiful when he designed humankind, when he designed you and I. And God had intentionality. He had a purpose for those things. Now, let me just back up for just a minute and say that if I were a uh, a designer, let's say, okay, let's say I was an engineer and I were to design um, a uh, and I were to design a three D printer to print um, items that were to help people. 
um, to be able to overcome COVID-19, okay? Um, or, or let's just say for a moment that I was a, a, a chemist and I was able to, and a biologist, and I was able to understand everything that's going on with this uh, virus. And um, I created a cure for it, but somehow someone came along and took that cure and made it into something evil. How do you think I would feel? Well, I wouldn't feel very good about that, right? Like that would be frustrating to me. When we don't consider the fact that God designed us and he designed us in a specific way, we ignore this understanding of how you and I are supposed to respond in times like this. God created us and he created us in a specific way. He created us in his likeness, in his image, as a reflection of him. And how is it that you and I reflect the image of God? Well, one of the ways that we reflect the image of God is structurally. Okay, now I know, I know. Hold, hang on here with me, and I think this will make sense. In, under, in other words, the, the way that God equipped us has given us a, a, um, a, a way that we can operate in this world. He has given us ration, rational thinking. We can think about and evaluate what we are doing, or at least once we turn 21 or something, right? Um, we can use our brains and we can think. That's a joke for those that weren't following along. But we can think, and that is a way in which we have intellect and we we can process and we have a, a conscience and that's a way that we are like God. We are like him structurally. Um, Anthony Hokema in his book, Created in the Image of God, says this, in some then we may say that by the image of God in a structural sense, we mean the entire endowment or the entire gift and capacities that enable man and woman to function as he should in his various relationships and callings. So everything we have, the ability to speak and think and communicate, all of those things that allow us to fulfill our various functions, those equipping that we have to be able to fulfill that, um, that is the structural sense in which we emulate or we, we mirror the image of God in the world around us. But another way that we look like Christ, or look like God, another way that we um, are created in his likeness is functionally. Functionally in our relationships. You see, even in Genesis chapter 1, it says, let us make God in our, in our image. Even there, there's a, a plurality, there's a relationship. And who is God talking to in that moment? Well, he's talking to, we see there a picture of God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit interacting with each other in a community, a perfect community, and he's going to create man in that likeness. And this is what we see in chapter 2. And remember, I said in order for us to understand this, we have to understand how God relates to us and we relate to God and to each other. And so we have to, we have to grasp that, and this is how God relates to us. He created us with the design to picture him to the world around us. And so this is one way that we understand social distancing um, because he functionally created us to relate to him and others. And so when we can't relate, we can't be in proximity to and have a relationship in the way that we've had them, then we struggle to understand our purpose. We, it feels as though something is missing because it is. So this is functionally what is going on in our lives. So we see here this, this relationship. In chapter 2, we see a, a relationship between God and man. In, in chapter 2, verse 15, it says, The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You may surely eat of the tree of the garden, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day you eat it you shall surely eat die. And so we see God giving command. He's giving a, a purpose. He's created functionally man to be in creation, to relate to creation um, by taking care of it, stewarding it, looking over it. And he's relating to God by being obedient. In other words, our first inclination or our first priority is to relate to God as 
God. He is sovereign over all, and we relate to him as God, then we are doing right. But then next to that, we see our relationship to others in verse 18. He says, Then the Lord said, God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. Now, I just want to stop for just a moment. I do think, and we can understand this specifically when we get to the book of Ephesians, that this relates to husbands and wives, but I don't think it relates only to husbands and wives. This relates to our relationships with one another. It is not good for man to be alone. We were created for relationships. God created us for that. We're going to even see later in in a couple of days that Christ prays that we would continue to relate to each other, or we would be restored in relationship to each other um, in the way that God relates to himself. And so we see that God created us for this purpose of being in relationship with other people. And when we aren't in relationship with other people, we miss what God created us to do and to B, and so we relate to others and we relate to creation. We oversee it. We're over it. it it's under our dominion. And we're going to even see Adam here as he names off the livestock and the birds and the beasts of the field. Um, he, he, is, he is designated who they are. He's relating to God and he's relating to creation the way that he is supposed to. All right, so this is what I want us to see. And I'm going to quote um, Anthony Hokema again here. He says, men and women cannot attain, we, we cannot fulfill uh, true humanity in isolation. They need the fellowship and stimulation of others. We are social beings. The very fact that man is told to love his neighbor as himself implies that man needs a neighbor. We need to relate to each other. We need one another. The reason that social distancing feels wrong is because we were created for more than being isolated. We were created for one another. We were created for God to relate to one another. Jesus, when he's asked, uh, by the by, the lawyer, he says, what is the greatest command? Well, that you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, right? We relate to God in that way. And the second is likened unto it, that you should love your neighbor as yourself. These are fundamental characteristics of being a human. We are called to relate to each other. Bruce Ware, in his book on the Trinity, it's a great book, he says this, We are created and finite representations. We are images of God, of God's own nature, that in relationship with him and each other, they might be his representatives in carrying out the responsibilities he has given to them. In this sense, we are images of God in order to image God and his purposes in the ordering of our lives and the carrying out of God-given responsibilities. If we are thus to represent God and reflect who he is in our relationships and activities, part of this involves reflecting the ways in which the triune person relates to one another. Okay, I'm not going to bore you with any more theology for today, but I need you to understand this. Social distancing feels inhumane because it's not the way God created us to be. I do not mean to say that we should ignore our government and what it has asked us to do. I do mean to say that we have to evaluate why this feels wrong, what we're missing out on, and we have to live that out in our lives in a new way. So this is what I would ask you. Here's the takeaways, the practical takeaways for today. First and foremost, pray to God asking for wisdom on how to obey this, how to obey this command to reflect his image while obeying the authorities during this time. Ask for wisdom. If anyone asks for wisdom, we should ask, right? Ask for wisdom. 
God, I want to obey you. I want to fulfill this command, this design that you have for me. How do I do this? Secondly, evaluate the relationships in your life. Evaluate the relationships in your life. Are you viewing them through the lens of God's word or through your own selfish desires? Are you viewing your relationships with others as an opportunity to reflect the nature of God to the world around us as he designed us to do? Or are you using them to create people and circumstances that reflect your own desires and your own interest? Three, call a friend, call a neighbor, call a church member, call a family member, check on them and listen for ways that you can serve them without violating the stay-at-home order. Listen with the purpose of thinking about ways that you can work in that relationship without ignoring the commands of the authorities. This is something that we have to do today. So I hope this is helpful for you, and I'm going to ask that you come back tomorrow as we as we continue to look at this idea, and we're going to ask, what's the real reason for social distancing? What's the real reason for social distancing? Um, Many of us have blamed it on our government. Many of us have blamed it on many things, but what's the real reason? We're going to get to the root of that tomorrow. So I'm going to pray for us, and then I'm going to ask um, you to continue to think about these things and tune in tomorrow. So if you would, pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day that you've given us. We thank you for the blessing of your word, and we thank you that it teaches us what is going on, that the things that we're experiencing now, these these tensions that we feel in our own life about being isolated from others, Lord God, I, I pray that you would help me to communicate faithfully in an engaging way these truths, and that we would share them with others, and that they would become helpful for us, that we might honor you better. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. I pray that you have a blessed day.